Welcome to April. And welcome to a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. As you can see, we are still practicing safe distancing from our homes. You may have heard that some local garden centers are open. If you would like to pick up some veggie starts or fruit starts, just check their websites or give them a call to do your garden shopping. Some are offering curbside pickup and others even offering delivery. Here's what's coming up on the show today. We show you how to build an edible container. We divide some hostas, but first building a sedum wreath. So I'm excited to be out at Little Prince today with Reggie. And Hi, Reggie, Ryan. what are we making today? We're going to make a sedum wreath. Excellent. And so what do we, what do we have for you? Okay. First of all, uh, this is a uh, moss wreath. And it is, this one's not been soaked, so it's okay. really dry. It's very, very dense. And we recommend that you soak these for probably six, eight hours at least, so that they're nice and wet. And they are, when they are wet, they're very, very heavy. So, and so it also probably makes it a little bit easier to put to poke, poke the holes and it put does, the plants in. It does because you you really can't get the holes poked into this dry wreath. Okay, and what is a good way of you know if people are at home a way that they can poke poke okay. the holes into these? Oh, uh, you can use a screwdriver, okay. or maybe if you have some nice long pointed clippers, you can dig in there and kind of okay. scooch around, so you make a hole that's about oh what inch and a half, two inches. And it looks like you have a fan fancy tool here yes. that's a able to do that. We think this is a bulb <laughs> platter. But it seems to work, it seems to work, it works work really, well. Yeah, it works So well. it looks like Joe just po poking it right. in, into right. there. Uh -huh. And then you're able to kind of open up the little right. moss holes there. Right. So, and then all you do is you take a, a, um, a sedum, you push it in really good and tight and make sure that the, the moss is snugged around it. And so then you can just kind of yeah. al alternate, alternate both, both right? Uh huh. Right. And then what kind of uh, plants have we chosen today okay. to put in here? Okay, we're using hardy sedums and sempervivums. I'll just go around and keep ma making you some holes okay. here to keep, good. keep you filling it in. And then does it matter how how close or how far apart your well your you want to you want to put them a couple inches apart and you need to really stagger them some on the side some. A little more towards the top so that when they all grow in together there won't be any spaces showing. It looks like you've chosen kind of a nice mixture yeah. of different colors, colors and dif right. different textures between some of the sempervirus exactly. and some of the sedum. Yes. So it's kind of personal choice yes, then as is. to what you it want. Is. Yes, by all means. Okay. And I suppose you could go and make one all of the if you wanted all red hens hens and chicks, you, you, could. you could do that too. You could, but it would be I don't know that it would it would fill in real well. The sedums, uh, the sedums really help fill it in. They kind of spread out like, uh, they spread out and grow around. So it looks like some of these that you've planted earlier kind of have that, that effect have. that's going on. So this has been planted up for... Right, and you see here, there's a sempervivum here and here, and the sedums have kind of filled in around it. And these, of course, have gotten way larger. Right, so after they've, after they've grown and kind of all filled in, right. And then what, what kind of care does this take? Uh, I would suggest that you soak it in either a bucket or a big pan at least once a week okay. really, really well. Or the other thing you can do is, and I have just flipped it over on its top and then just taken my hose and just watered really, really heavily. And do this two or three times if you don't have some place okay. to really soak it in. Because it acts like a big sponge, right? It Where does. you want it to soak up that it does, moisture. Yeah. And, and, and if wet. you do it really well, even in the warmest weather, it'll probably only need to be done once a week. Okay. And then as far as displaying these, you know, it looks like these come on the back with a little yeah. little hanger. They they can either be hung like this or they have feet on here so that you can set it on a table. 
And the other good thing about these feet is it's really nice because if you have a wood-sided house, it, the, the moisture won't be flat up against the wood. And it looks like you know, some of these are start, some of the sedums are starting to grow and hang down. Yeah. Is that something that can be pruned and trimmed? Absolutely, absolutely. It will probably make it look a lot neater if you keep it trimmed. And some of the, the sempervivums, when they start throwing their little chicks, those really can be cut off also. Cut off, or you could, or if or, they could let them grow and pin right, them, pin them you in. You can or, pin it in. You could probably pin this in with something, and it would root right into the moss. Okay. And then, where if you know, if somebody wanted to do this at home, where would they be able to find these you, these kind of supplies? The we offer the planted ones already on our website, Little Prince to Plants to Go, or we can send sell you the empty ring and the plants as well. Or you can go to your local garden center and buy exactly. your plants there. So here's a great winter project that you can do this winter. It's hardy. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to find the plants or the products, you can go on littleprinceplants.com or visit your local garden center. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Don't lose the battle with weeds. The Bonide line of weed beater products will help you get a handle on your weed problems. They are active in cool weather and you'll see visible results in less than 24 hours. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I'm with Rick at French Prairie Perennials in Aurora. Hi. And you always have such beautiful things. So what are you going to have? This is one of my favorite plants. This is a dwarf blue atlas cedar called Hortzman. So the growth rate is a lot slower than it is on your typical blue atlas cedar. And it's only going to max out you know, between 10 and 12 feet. So it's not going to get huge. Nice. So it's a really great accent for the garden because of the bright blue color. Perfect. And then I always love Japanese umbrella pines. Yeah, this is a dwarf Japanese umbrella pine called Stern, Stern Snoopy, but now it's called Green Star. <laughs> but Green Star is a very columnar, slow growing uh, plant that's going to get, you know, in that six to eight foot range. So it's not a huge plant and it's only going to be, you know, two, three feet wide. So it's not really wide. But the thick needle is how you tell Green Star it's from beautiful. every other Japanese umbrella pine. Beautiful texture. And the very dense growth rate is, habit is, is, is very nice. And such a nice contrast to this gold plant down here. Absolutely. As you know from our visual escaping projects, contrast is really big for mm -hmm. us. And this is a dwarf uh, Suara cypress called Harvard Gold. I really like it because it has a very even growth habit, very slow growth habit. So it looks like you've spent hours pruning it and manicuring <laughs> it, but so you can take all the credit, but you don't have to do any of the work. And full sun? Uh, I can take full sun. Nice. I mean, sometimes it's good to give it a little bit of afternoon shade, but it depends on the summer. Like last summer, you know, we had such a blasted hot summer right. that, that uh, they needed a little bit of protection. But uh, normal, under normal conditions, you can grow it in full sun. Wonderful. And then a broadleaf evergreen. That's beautiful. Yeah, this is Mahonia Soft Caress, which is a 
uh, a nice different texture because it's the kind of bamboo-like foliage. And it also blooms in early winter, which is, is unique because not a lot of things do. So it has a nice bright yellow flower in the, in the early winter. So uh, it's another good plant because we're really big on 12-month color. So Exactly. Yeah. And so you're talking about dwarf varieties here. And so they're just a little bit more expensive than their cousins. So why would that be? Well, because for instance, if I plant this perennial, this heuchera, once I plant it six to eight weeks later, I have a sellable plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, Harvard Gold, I'll have a sellable plant in five to six years. Uh. So dwarf conifers grow really slowly, so there's a lot more that goes into them. So yeah, they're a little more expensive, but you also have a 12-month color and you have a very unique plant that grows slowly that requires no maintenance. Uh. So. Well, not only do they have plants here at French Prairie Perennials, they have a beautiful gift shop. And I'm with Carrie. Mm -hmm. And what kind of things can we see here then? Well, we have um, nature-inspired gifts. Um, home decor, we have things like rain chains, we have things like um, um, metal spirals to go on walls for your fence so you don't have to look at a bare fence all summer. <laughs> um, we have uh, bird feeders, we have Quite, a, quite an assortment, actually. Oh, and then they have chocolate, they have gift cards, they have jewelry, <laughs> they have so many different things. You really can get lost here. Come on down to Aurora and see French Prairie Perennials. Thanks so much, Carrie. Thanks, Judy. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. So I talked to some of the people here and they were giving me a pretty a pretty good deal on trading my truck in. So then I went home and got her and I said, okay, come pick out a Subaru. I felt like the entire process was transparent and that they were really honest and open with us about everything and that made it easier to want to purchase from Capital. I think they want to keep, you know, loyal customers and I never got that from any other dealership. Capital isn't on the parkway, they are the parkway. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Many people looking for health care alternatives have experienced the benefits of CBD oils and creams. But how do you know you're getting the highest quality products? Trust Red Barn Hemp. We sustainably grow the hemp on our farm in the Willamette Valley, then extract the oil in our industry-leading on-site lab. All plants, oil, and final product are tested along the way, so you can be assured you're getting the highest quality CBD products available. Have questions? Stop by our retail store or check out our website. Red Barn Hemp. For family. For life. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. So here we are with uh, Thomas from Seabright Gardens. It's a uh, late winter, early spring. You know, our gardens are starting to waken up, and we're going to divide some perennials, yep. kind of you know multiply what yep. we have. And all right, so what are we working on today? Well, we thought we'd work on hostas today. Um, this is a good time to do hostas is when they're in this stage here. When you see, I call this a pencil point stage because okay. you can see where they're up, where they're at in the garden. And we've cheated a little bit by taking one out of a pot, but right. which, which is a very looks like a very full yeah, it's a, pot it's a very bound plant, very, very so full pot bound plant. Anyways, this is a perfect time to do it. And uh, what we want to start by doing is try and pull the roots apart. Okay. Again, I try to do as much pulling on the roots as I can before I actually uh, do any cutting. Right. Because it 
it's easier to make it break where it wants to break than it is to okay. try and force it. It looks it. like you don't have to be super gentle with you, these. You, you can just kind of dive right in. You don't have to be gentle, and you can you can cut some of the roots like that. It's it's fine. Okay. But now now that I'm at to this point here, take your knife. I always stick it in from the bottom, not from the top, because the top you can always cut damage some of the okay. some of the growing points. But if you go in from the side or from the bottom like this, and then just pull with your hands, and it'll eventually just. And come just apart. Kind of work, working it and teasing yeah. it apart. And as e exactly. Yeah. And this way it'll break where the weak point is and it won't damage any of the growing crowns. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want to break off that, that top. Right, crown, right, right. You can see then there's another little shoot right right there. And you can see we haven't, by cutting underneath, we didn't cut through any of the growing points and we pulled from the bottom. Okay. And you just pull it apart like that. And of course that That'll be one plant right there, so you can do that. So then you, this would you know, come up. So each one of these points is where, where your foliage the is. The growth points, right. yes, okay. exactly. And so that, there's one plant there, and then we see we've got a growing point there and a growing point there, there and there. So there's a potential to get two more. So you might go like right, be, right between here where you have a little bit of space to Ex try to let Exactly. That so that way you get two, two more double crowns. So I'll probably go in again from the side like this and cut like that. And this is like there's not, nothing special about your knife, you know. It's no, no, no. I just gotta uh, just buy them in bulk because I go through a lot of knives right. here at the nursery. Or people go down to the old dollar store or it, whatever it, and pick, pick up a for sure, a, for a, sure, a cheap knife or something that's in the in the garden. Now here's a good example here of what uh, this is the what we call the mother plant right here. Okay. This is this is the point that would have bloomed last year, and it, when it's when it blooms, that part dies. So you can use that as a point to cut. So that. This here is all stuff that's not going to have any growing points on it. So you could take that off okay, if you so wanted to. Okay, because it looks like you know we've cut cut through it. Exactly. You know, so that's not going to be that's not going to be viable or anything. Coming yeah, there's out of no. It. You can see there's no eyes and no shoots or anything coming on it, okay. so that piece can go away. But see now we've got another nice double double plant there, and another nice double plant okay. there, and we could keep dividing if we want to down to single down to single crowns, and you you can also you can also root prune if you want to, you know don't they don't have to be this. This may look very uh, vicious, but <laughs> it's fine. But, but it looks like you're getting a lot of the roots up along these stems. Yes, so that's, exactly. Does that promote more rooting? It, it does. It does. It does. And it makes it easier to plant. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you can definitely take off some of those bottom roots okay. like that and it won't hurt. But I like to do the hostas now. Uh, best time, I think, to divide the hostas is either right now or in the fall. Um, I say in the fall because when the plant has gone through its complete growth season okay. and uh, you divide it in the fall, it's not going to be any shock to the plant, so you're not going to have any wilt or anything. Do you, do you wait for all the foliage to die down in I, the fall? I, I, do I don't, actually. Foliage? You can do that, I think, late August, early September is a really good time to do it, and you can cut them apart with the foliage on, and you can take the foliage off then okay. if you want to. It won't, it won't hurt them. But uh, this is also a very good time to do it. Um, when and then, you know, we're the using ones that are in potted in containers, but if they're in the yard and the landscape already, you know, and your clumps getting bigger and bigger, yep. you can those can be divided as yes, well. Yes, we yes, yes, for sure. For sure, um, you can. There's several different things you can do if you want to um, uh, divide the hosses and leave some of them still in the ground. Right. Uh, just take a shovel and, and pry a piece off the side. Okay. Or you can. You know, or you can be gentle like this with the knife, but either way works well. So um, depending on the size of your clump, for you can sure. either dig the whole clump up and then replant it. Yeah. And so then yep. when we go to take this chunk and replant that, what do we? Yep. yep. What do we need to worry about? Do we need to fan out the roots, uh, or are they going straight? No, down they're 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 pretty easy. Just just put it back in like pretty much just like this, okay. and and you can you, you can fan the roots out like that if you want to, but uh, I'm and pretty. Is there anything special you need to do to prep the soil to go? go back in? Uh, the soil, I usually just, uh, my soil is so good that I just put them back into a light, fluffy soil. If you've got a heavy clay soil, okay. uh, you probably want to add some compost or something to make it loose uh, okay. for it. And they don't like or to start, have... Or a starter fertilizer to promote root growth, or are they pretty hardy if you have a They're good They're, soil they're pretty good if you've got good soil. They shouldn't need any anything. I don't ever okay. put any starter stuff in for them when I plant them in the landscape, and they always do, you know, come on and grow really well. Now, if people are interested in hostas, you grow many varieties of hostas. Yeah, uh, pro we probably grow one of the biggest selections in the country. We grow about 1,200 different varieties. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so we have lots here, and we have, we're open for uh, business starting the 28th of March. Uh, every day from 10 to 10 to 5. And they, and they can come down here they, to they the They can come here and go through and, and be overwhelmed by the amount of right. houses there and are. But you also sell them online. We do. We do sell okay. them online as well. So they can also go to seabrightgardens.com and, and 
see what we've got there as well. So great. Well, we appreciate all the information on the hostas, and it's you know, an exciting plant that you can you know so much you can do with. And yeah. You can come down here to the nursery to purchase them, or you can get online and see all the amazing varieties that are grown out here at Seabright Gardens. At Sagawa Nursery, we talk about going beyond the ordinary. Whether it's new and exciting varieties of plants and shrubs, to a wide selection of unique Japanese maples, or our great collection of tools, garden products, and Asian-themed gifts, we can help transform your garden into something extraordinary. Come in and let us make your garden a showcase. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Hey everybody, this is Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden. We've got some great tips to help you in the garden this year. We're going to combine two of our favorite trends in gardening today. We're going to talk about edible gardening and container gardening and put them together. First, we're going to get started with a brand new container. One of the things you always want to check for is to make sure it has good drainage. This particular pot did not have holes in the bottom. So we're going to flip it over, take a drill, put probably four holes in the bottom of it. Once we've got the holes in the bottom, we're going to take a little tip that we like to do at the farm. We take some of our empty pots and containers that we have laying around in the garage or in the back. We're gonna kind of crush those up, put those in the bottom here. That gives us a lightweight, easy drainage in the bottom of our pot. Then we're gonna take some really good all-purpose potting soil and put right over the top of them. Once we have all that done, we're gonna take some of our favorite new edible plants and put them in the container. This is a brand new raspberry called Raspberry Shortcake. One of the things that you want to be careful with this is a lot of it fruits on second year canes. So you can see these nice big canes coming with buds in the top. That's going to give us our fruit this year. At the end of the season, take these canes out and you've got brand new ones for next season. Now that we have the raspberry planted firmly in the middle of the pot, I've picked out a good mixture of things to kind of put around the outside that look great, are going to smell good, and that we can use in our kitchen. One of my favorites to use to add a little bit of color is, of course, these beautiful violas. The blossoms are actually edible, but they also add some color to our container. So we'll plant these in the side. We also are gonna find some lettuce starts. We've got a good romaine. We've got some salad mix we're gonna throw in there, and also some trailing sugar snap peas. And of course, finally, some herbs. So let's put all of those together and see what we can come up with. Alrighty, I've got everything all put together with my raspberries, herbs, and veggie starts. I'm already getting hungry. For more information, go to www.baumannfarms.com.
You know, we wanted to give you some simple ideas and tips on making trellises because so many things in a garden, mm -hmm. vine, and whether you're talking about vegetables or some, you know, just some beautiful oh, flowering sure. stuff, you really want to make some nice uh, trellises. So here we have an idea with bamboo. Right, you know, I just found these in my shed, and so I just took them together and I found it a huge twist tie and just gathered them at the top and I'll just drive them into the ground for some more support. I can use this for peas or beans or even ornamental vines for the summertime. And it's really very simple to do. You just there get you three go. things, and it doesn't have to be bamboo. You can use pieces of iron, you can use small pieces of wood, anything sure. that you might have laying around. You just take some stretch tape and you tie them up. And then all you do is just spread them out. And it's just that simple. That is good. Well, you know, we all have tomato cages. This is a great square one. You don't have to just use them for tomatoes. We've used these for peas, and what's a great idea is to plant the peas on the inside, and then they'll wind their way up. You don't plant the peas on the outside because if you need to hoe around it or weed around it, you can actually mm -hmm. take the plants out. So this way, the plants are protected on the inside of the trellis. Here's another great idea that's very cost effective for the garden. It's just trellises made with PVC. You get some PVC, you get some uh, T connectors and some corners. The great thing about this idea is you can cut them to any height you want, any width you want, and look at that, they still move. So in the winter time, if you're not using them, just fold Perfect. them up, put them in the, the garage or in your shed, and then you string them with just some simple string or twine or even hemp and it works great. And you can make different sizes, Judy. Yeah, look at this one. It's just a shorter version of yours. It's just for some cucumbers that aren't going to get as tall as the beans. Mm -hmm. So it's really effective that way. Now we've got one more thing mm -hmm. we want to show you. Let's go to another place in the garden. William, this is a great idea. If you have an existing fence, these are fence posts that are already in for this really long fence trellis system. And all we did was put some eye hooks in here and they're stainless or they're galvanized, so they're not gonna rust. And you know, all we did here was use some fishing wire. Now, some people don't wanna use fishing wire because they say it doesn't biodegrade, that's fine. You can still use twine or string or hemp again just to string it up. And then it gives your vines a really great place to grow. You know, everybody is looking to add some verticality into their garden. These are four simple ways to make trellises to make your garden more beautiful. Thanks for watching the show today. If you want more information about today's show or to watch it again, you can go to gardentime.tv. We hope that you stay safe and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.